is it that you didn't build it? So David, apparently he owed his son an explanation, so he tells him. He tells him, and, and uh, he says this, And David said to Solomon, My son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Thou hast shed blood abundantly, and hast made great wars. Thou shalt not build a house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. In my sight, David was a man of war, and had shed much blood. And he was going to have his son, it says, verse 9, Behold, a son shall be born to thee, who shall be a man of rest. And I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. All his enemies round about. For his name shall be Solomon. And I will give peace and quietness uh, unto, Israel's, in, unto Israel in his days. He shall build a house for my name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom uh, over Israel, over Israel forever. Now I want you to look down now at, at verse number 14. Look down at verse number 14. Now to inspire and encourage Solomon to do his duty, David, uh, David really gives him an example to follow. Uh, David had continued to gather supplies in all of his days of trouble. In the midst of all his trouble, David had continued to do the duty of gathering supplies for this, for this great project that was to be done for the Lord by, by Solomon. And so David was, was giving his son an example. He was giving his son an example uh, to inspire and to encourage Solomon to do his duty. This is what he says in verse 14. Now behold, I mean, look, in my trouble I have prepared for the house of the Lord an hundred thousand talents of gold and a thousand thousand talents of silver and of brass and iron without weight, for it, it is in, in abundance. Timber also and stone have I prepared, and thou mayest add thereto. Now, for time's sake, turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. God denied the request of David to build the temple. It was not because he was unhappy with him or mad or that he wasn't with him. Very opposite. The, the truth was, was, was opposite of that. The truth was opposite of that. But God had David's son Solomon to, do the temple, to build the temple. And God said, David, I, I, don't, I don't have that for you. And the response of David was the response of him humbling himself and submitting to God. And it showed that his true heart's desire was not wrapped up in a project. And that's a big thing we got to remember. That, that, that our heart for God can't be wrapped up in a project. It needs to be wrapped up in honoring God. That's what it needs to be wrapped up in. Whatever that package looks like, it needs to be wrapped up in, in honoring God. Not so much wrapped up in the project. In the project. 2 Corinthians chapter... The, the project is important. The, many projects are important. But that's not where our focus should be. Our focus should be in our heart to honor the Lord, to honor the Lord. And so when we make a request and we get an idea and that, and that, and that gets turned down and, and maybe God doesn't have that for us, it'll reveal in our, in our response, it'll reveal our heart. Are we, were we just wrapped up in the idea? We're excited about the idea and then when God said, no, I'm not going to have you serve that way, is our, is our heart really to honor God? Or even if I could say it in a different way. Sometimes, you know, People are limited in what they can do for God. And so we get this idea and we want to do it for God, but God says, look, and sometimes it's, it's not just that a pastor says no or someone in ministry says no or something happens. It's something physical limiting, physically limiting, maybe health-wise, maybe health-wise. You know, I, I really started thinking about preaching this sermon, I hope, hope you understand it a little bit too, um, because um, of people not being able to come to church. Not being able to come to church. And uh, just just started to really think there's many people who can't come to church on a regular basis. Not because it's what they choose. Not because it's what they choose. But because of health. Sometimes, listen, sometimes because of work schedule. We've all been there. But a lot of times, it's because of health. And that can become very discouraging. And, that can be good. and it's not that they don't want to be here. They want to be here with all their heart, but God has said, I don't have that for you right now. I don't have that for you right now to be, to be able to do that. But it's not because God is mad. It's not because God is unhappy. It's not because God is not with you. It's not because God is not with you. It's not because He doesn't love you the same as everyone else. You need to put those thoughts. If those thoughts are in your head, you've got to throw those thoughts out. Those are not God's thoughts. You've got to think God's thoughts. Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. That's what God says. That's what He says to you. He loves you with an everlasting love. With loving kindness have I drawn thee. That's what He says. He loves you. 
So you need to put those thoughts, put those thoughts out of your head. We, we all want to be in church. God's people, we want, we want to be in church. That's where the heart is, you see. That's where the heart is. We want to honor God, you see. And it's hard for us not to be in church. I want us to think about that when we, when we really can't be together. And we can't be in church right now for the time being. Um, for the time being. And, and think about those who, who can never come. Or hardly ever come. Who want to be here so desperately. And the truth is that, that listen, that, that God loves you. But for whatever reason, for whatever reason, God has allowed something in your life and said, that, that's just not for you right now. That's not, that's not, that's not for you right now. So let me just read a couple, a couple verses in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And, and, and I'll wrap this up and I'll tie this in. And, and I hope it's an encouragement. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, For we dare not make ourselves of the number, this is Paul speaking, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. You get yourself into a lot of trouble if you compare yourself with other people. If you measure yourself to other people. I want you to see that word measure. Measure yourself to other people. Because God does not have the same measure for every person. God does not have the same field to work for every person. It's not the same for every person. But just as he didn't have David building the temple, would you say for one instance that David did not bring as much glory to God as Solomon did? Solomon was the one that God had chosen to build the temple. But would you say that David did not glorify God as much as Solomon did just because of the field, just because of the field they worked, just because of the, the fruit in the field that they brought forth, the measure that God gave them? What he allowed one to do, what he didn't allow the other to do, and vice versa. Would you say that one glorified God? Listen, listen, no. But you don't compare yourselves to others. You don't say, oh, you know what we do? God answered that person's prayer. How come he didn't answer my prayer? That, that's a bad place to go. That is a bad place to go. He answered that prayer for that person, but he did. does that mean he doesn't love me? And he loves that person more? Or maybe I'm not doing it. Listen, that is a dangerous, those are not God's thoughts. Please, bring those captive to the obedience of Christ. That, those, are, those are thoughts that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. You, you have to bring those and drag those to the Word of God and toss them out when they are contrary to what God has said. And how God, those are not God's thoughts. Verse 13. But we will not boast of things without our measure. Now listen to what he's saying. Without our measure. That means outside. Outside of our measure. I want you to picture the measure that God gives each man as a field. As they feel, and, and I love this. I was just reading. I was just reading today earlier, and I started thinking about this sermon. I was reading about one of David's mighty men. Remember Shama? Remember Shama, one of David's mighty men. And and, and there were the Israelites in Shama in this little in this little village, and, and and they had a little pea field, a little pea field, right? Just a, just a little field, and it had peas there or lentils uh, in the field there. And uh, and then they're all out there and they're working on this picture like that. And and uh, and over the hill, what happens? There comes a troop, the Bible says, of Philistines. There comes a troop of Philistines. And everyone runs. Everyone runs except one man. His name is Shaman. And, 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 and he doesn't just stand in the corner or hide behind, hide behind one of the houses and think of it. He goes to the middle of the field. He goes to the middle of the field and stands there and takes on the Philistine troop. And kills all of them, by the way. Has a great victory. But listen... That field, that measure, listen, that, that measure, it had fruit in it. And, and the Bible says in John chapter 15, the Bible says in John chapter 15, here it is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. And he's given every man a measure, a field to work. And it may not have been important enough for all the rest of the Israelites to stand there and fight for what God had given them, but it was important enough to Shammah to take on that and get the victory to the Lord. He went to the middle. He stood in the midst of the field, in the middle of the field, because that was his field. That was his measure. And with God's help and God's grace and God's strength, he wasn't afraid of the enemy. He took to battle, and, and God, through, through God giving him the strength and the grace, he slew, he slew the Philistines. It was important enough for him to defend. It was important enough for him to defend. And Paul says here, but we will not boast of things without our measure. That means there's work that other people are doing, and Paul says, listen, I'm not going to boast about things that God doesn't have for me. It's outside of my measure. It's outside of my field that he has me working. I'm not going to boast about what everyone else is doing. Right? I'm not going to do that. 
but according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. For we stress not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reached not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors. See? Outside what it is that God has for you, outside of your measure. God has a measure for every man that is given to every man, and it does not look the same. It does not look the same. But there's danger in comparing, and that's why we don't do it. And just because your measure looks different than someone else's doesn't mean that God loves you less, or that God is unhappy with you, or He has not blessed you like other people. Listen, He loves you the same. He has a measure for you, and in that measure, and in that field, you are to work and produce fruit by His grace that you can glorify your Father. Doesn't matter. Listen. It doesn't, doesn't matter if you never again grace the doors of a church. Now, I know that would be amazing, and that's what's in your heart. I understand that. I understand that. But, but that's... But, but it does not make you any less of a Christian. It does not make God love you any less. It does not make Him bless you any less. He knows your heart. Now, I'm going to show you something in a minute. He knows your heart. He knows, he knows you want to be here. He knows you want to be here. He knows that you love Him. He knows that you want to honor Him. In your heart, don't believe the lies of the devil that it's any different. Verse number 16. To preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commended himself to prove, but uh, whom the Lord commended. Whom the Lord commended. Listen. Every person has a measure that God has given us. It's not all the same. Everyone can't look the same. That'd be confusing. Nothing would get done. <laughs> Nothing would get done. Every man has a measure. And you know what I say man, I say mankind. Every person has a measure that God gives them. And it doesn't all look the same. And sometimes, we, we spend a lot of time wishing we could be in another person's measure. In another, another person's field. Work in that field, but that's not the field that God has for you. And your field is no less significant than any other person's field. God has specifically and specially designed that field for you. That may, think of how much thought that took. That's what he been telling David. David, David, stop trying to get to another field. No, no, no. David, listen, that's not the field I have for you. That's not the measure I have for you. But let me, let me tell you a little bit about your measure. Let me tell you a little bit about your field. Look at all that. Remember when you were a shepherd, David? When you were just following the sheep, isn't that funny when he didn't say the sheep were following him? <laughs> Remember when you were following the sheep? You were chasing those sheep. You were following the sheep around. And, and, and I made you a ruler over my people, Israel. Remember when I did that for you? And, 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 and all those great blessings. And then he gives them the future promise of all those blessings. That's the field. That's the measure that I have for you, David. That's the field. That's the measure that I have for you. They're telling me my time is running out on the clock. On the cl <laughs> Getting close. But that's all right. We're going we're gonna to finish up here. Just because your measure, your field is not the same as someone else's doesn't mean you're any less significant in God's plan. It doesn't. You need to get those thoughts out of your head. You can gather the supplies. How about that? You may not be, listen, you may not be able to be in church, but some of the people that I've known that have not been able to come to church, some of the greatest prayer warriors you ever meet in your life, they sit there and they gather the stuff. They gather the stuff at home and they spend time in prayer, they spend time in the work and they encourage and they do all those things because that is the measure, that is the field that God has them working. It's not their fault. That is what God has them working. So praise God for that. Don't feel condemned in your heart. You know, God loves you and you love God and you want to honor God. Don't let that condemnation slip. It's not from God. Now, one more place. I think I told you I don't want to make a liar of myself. <clears throat> I keep turning to 2 Corinthians. One more place. 2 Chronicles chapter 6. Literally, just want to show you one last thing because um, I'll read through my... This is the verse that triggered this message for me one day. It may not be that profound to you, but it is to me. When I saw this and uh, just started having thoughts. Um, 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse number 7, 8, and 9. You know, this is how you, you could know for sure, too, that David's heart was in honoring God. And listen, whatever measure God has given you, Sometimes you get great ideas to go serve God. Sometimes you really wish you could do things that you're not able to do. But, but God is not upset with you um, for thinking those things. But when the answer comes and God says, I don't have that for you, 
We need to be okay with that. We need to be humble and we need to be submitted to that. And, and, and that's the important part. But having the idea of getting excited about that, that's why I was going to name the sermon originally a long time ago, but I thought that really doesn't make much sense. It's the thought, it's the thought that counts. But sometimes we have some great thoughts to do some things for God and we can be kind of disappointed. We get all excited about it. And then God maybe closes the door and says, I, I don't have that for you right now. I don't have that for you. I have that. I have that. that can be discouraging. And that can be disappointing. But you know what? If in your heart you did those things to honor God, God knows that. God makes a record of that. He makes a note of that. And I want you to see that. I want, it's exciting to me. I want you to see that. 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse number 7. Just three more verses and we're done. This is Solomon speaking. Now it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to David, my father, for as much as it was in thine heart to build a house for my name, thou didst well in that it was in thine heart. God didn't rebuke David for having a desire to do something for God. God didn't say, hey, I never told you to do that. How could you, how could you come up with an idea like that? What are you thinking? That's not what God said. Look at that. For as much as it was in thine heart to build a house for my name, God said, I know, David, the thoughts of your heart. It was in your heart to build a house for me. And thou didst well in that it was in thine heart. Thou didst well that it was in thy heart. He said, David, that, that, is, that, is, that is well. That is right to have a heart that wants to honor me. To have a heart that wants to do those things for me because you love me. And he said, thou didst well. You want to hear God say, thou didst well, and that it was in thine heart, right? He told David, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't have that for you, but you did well that you were thinking about me. You did well that you were trying to honor me. You did well that you got excited about doing something for me instead of getting excited about doing something for yourself, which is the whole rest of this culture that we live in. Isn't it true? You follow that? We get excited about doing things for ourselves, but... I just wonder if God's in heaven sometimes saying, I, I wish it was in your heart to do something for me, even if I had to say no. I just want someone to think about me. Thou didst well that it was in thine heart, he said to David. Notwithstanding, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son, shall, which shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house for my name. For my name. <clears throat> God has a different measure for every person. We ought not compare ourselves to others. That is not right. Because your measure is not going to look the same as someone else's. And by the way, we're not that good at measuring anyways. Right? Are we? We're not, that good. we're not that good at measuring anyways. Especially when it comes to spiritual things. Especially when it comes to God things. We measure things all wrong. We say, well, this looks really big and important. But often the things that look the most big and the most uh, uh, glorious and, and the most expansive and, and the greatest, biggest things uh, is the smaller things that really impress God. It's a matter of the heart and the desires of the heart that really impress God, and a heart that wants to honor God, is more impressive than any great big thing that's carried out for man's glory, for man's glory. And so whatever measure, listen, whatever measure it is that God has given you, hey, work that field, work that field, and bear that fruit, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And be thankful for the field that he's given you, even if it's hard. Even if it means that you can't do the things that, the ideas that you have or the things that you want to do that you are limited somehow. A door is closed or, or maybe it's health or something like that. Just work the field that God has given you. There's so much to do. And, 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 and gather the supplies. Gather the supplies. Just as David did. He was just, he was just as excited to gather those supplies. He was thinking about when his son was young and tender. He was just as excited to gather those supplies as he would have been building the temple for the Lord because his heart was in honoring God. And don't ever think the field that God has put you in is small or too small to do anything or to make a difference. And I hope that, I hope that that's an encouragement. And uh, I love you guys. We all love you guys. And, and I hope that God takes care of this coronavirus situation very quickly. And uh, I know he will. I know he will. We don't have to be afraid. And uh, I believe, you know, this, this, this will all pass. Um, and we'll see what it looks like on the other side. But we trust the Lord. We're not afraid. So I hope this was an encouragement. I love you guys. And in a good way, I know we're just getting the, 
not, I guess I can't call this a live stream, but we're working towards it now. That's a good thing. And so um, we'll just see what God has and all that. I'm going to go ahead and pray instead of ramble up here. And so, no, you're good, Kenneth. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for this church. Lord, and I thank you, Lord, for your people. God, I do pray, Lord, that, Lord, no doubt there are those who have had wonderful ideas, Lord, that they want to do for you because they want to honor you because they love you, God. And, Lord, there's been times when doors have closed, circumstances have come in that have uh, made it so that they cannot accomplish those things for you. And Lord, I, I just pray, God, that if there's a battle in their hearts about that, God, Lord, that they would Lord, just humble themselves and submit to your will, God. And Lord, most importantly as well, along with that, Lord, not believe the lies of the devil, that their measure is any less than any other man's. They wouldn't compare themselves. But that is the field that you would have them to work. And God, that they would work that with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength to bring forth fruit that would glorify you, God. That's what we are here for. And God, I pray that we would all do that. And every single one of us, Lord, would live inside of our measure and work inside of our measure, receiving the grace that you have for us, God. And that we would do it with joy. With joy in our hearts, God, for what you've given us. And I do pray, Lord, that this virus would pass. You'd keep our people healthy. And Lord God, also pray for missionaries and their families, Lord, out in, outside of this country, Lord, dealing with countless difficulties due to this, God. I, I pray, Lord, that your hand would be on each and every one of them as they're preaching the gospel, as they're loving these people who have never heard a clear presentation of what Jesus Christ has done for them. God, I thank you that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to live a sinless life, to shed his blood and die on the cross for our sins, to be dead and buried in to raise again the third day. And now you offer us the free gift of eternal life to anyone who will trust Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And I thank you for that free gift. Lord, I thank you for your grace and for your forgiveness, your love and mercy. And I pray you be with all of our church family. Keep us all safe, Lord. Keep us all healthy. Lord, help us to go out and, and live a testimony for you, Lord, this week that would glorify you Lord, to, that would give us opportunity to tell others about a Savior that died in their place for their sins, that they could be saved and forgiven. Spend eternity in heaven with you. Lord, we love you, not only for the things you've done for us, but God, more and more, as we open the Scriptures and learn about you and hear from you, God, we love you for who you are. God, I thank you for who you are in each and every one of our lives. Help us to become more conformed to the image of your Son daily. In your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed.